Survivors of ID explosions have said that they hear a loud bang. Their vision turns white and then they have a ringing in their ears and then they lose consciousness. So we just got back from Iraq where we concluded the production phase of our project about the dangers of landmines and IEDs in Fallujah as part of the Oculus VR for Good program in collaboration with GICHD. We couldn't have found a better fitting place than Fallujah for this VR project. ISIS lost control over Fallujah in December 2016. But even now when you walk the streets of Fallujah, you can still very well feel the presence of war. Bridge. There used to be a bridge. Yeah. It's a bridge, but they, it damaged now. They cut it to uh, to cut the root supplies. To create this uh, virtual reality experience, photogrammetry was one of the methods we were using, which basically means you take a lot of photos of uh, a room to recreate it later in. Uh, 3D so that you can walk through it. Maybe three, four hundred photos of each room in the house, so it's just a very time consuming process. Even with filming, there were challenges. So we'd have the whole setup, then the power supply went off, and then we'd just have to wait and then start over again. So in Fallujah, there are entire neighborhoods that are completely devastated by war. There's not one house I've seen in Fallujah that doesn't even have a bullet hole. All neighborhoods are contaminated by IEDs and landmines. We were thinking that it might be difficult to find protagonists for our story, but within half an hour, we found five families that have been affected. It was heartbreaking. Hour after hour, we were hearing stories of people having had these horrible accidents. This is uh, uh, one of the sisters of uh, uh, the victims who okay. killed in the incident. Okay. And she's uh, her second daughter-in-law. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Uh, she witnessed the incident. For us, this really shows the urgency of the project and also of the problem. And motivated us to really get the story out from there. We are approaching a security checkpoint and this, according to our local producer Swadad, is one of the toughest ones to cross and we could have problems. Our time was very limited in Iraq and that's mainly due to the checkpoints where each day we had to spend many hours waiting on checkpoints and waiting on checkpoints and waiting on checkpoints. Part of the reason is our very suspicious looking 360 cameras and the other one is that we were the first Western team as far as we know getting into Fallujah since the offensive. <laughs> We were in Anbar province, this is where ISIS started, therefore we were moving with military convoys at all times. The GICHD works in over 40 countries. In Iraq, we're working with the national authority in their efforts to clear contamination from past conflicts, but also the new contamination, like improvised explosive devices, that was left behind by ISIS. For us, it's very important to work with local partners who are carrying out operations on the ground. So the camera's still standing. Okay. Yes. No. It looks like everything is okay. okay. <laughs> we just have to. Yes, it looks okay, it's working. Stop it. Detonating recovered explosives is really the most convenient way to get rid of these weapons that could otherwise get into the hands of terrorists and to keep people safe. Okay. 
The people staying in the refugee camps are normally people who come from areas where it's still not safe to go home, either because there's still fighting going on or because their houses have been destroyed or their houses have been contaminated. There are some programs running in these refugee camps where they are teaching uh, the civilians on how to detect IEDs, so once they come home they can avoid the accident so many others had to face. We are about to go film on the roof. Yeah. One thing we took back home from Iraq was the warmth yeah. of the people. What's up? What's up? Shakumaku. Huh? Shakumaku. is a unique Iraqi expression which basically means what's up. But then there's a deeper meaning to it if you break it down, which is basically what is anything and what is nothing, or something deeply philosophical like this. They've been through a lot in the last decades, but they still hold on to their sense of humor and hope. Coming back from Iraq, the project is far from over. Now we have to get into post-production and that involves many people in many different steps. So that's what we are tackling right now. We're really stoked to work with our photogrammetry partners, realities.io, on this project. We can't wait to have you walk through Fallujah and meet our protagonist. <laughs>